Taxpayers, there is huge news in the tax world right now. On Tuesday, January 16th, Congress announced that they had reached a $78 billion tax deal that would bring sweeping changes to the tax code. The bill would make key alterations to many different tax rules that are crucial for individuals, families, and business owners. In this video, I'm gonna break down all of the most important aspects of this deal, including what the main tax changes are and how they could impact you. So keep watching because this is definitely one that you don't want to miss. Without further ado, let's dive in. Let's jump right in. Number one is bonus depreciation changes. If you don't know what bonus depreciation is, it refers to the ability of a business owner to deduct a large portion of the depreciation costs for eligible purchases that they make for their business in the year that they make them. This prevents the business owner from having to wait for a period of years to be able to deduct the full depreciation cost. Being able to use bonus depreciation to get massive tax breaks up front makes it easier for business owners to finance larger purchases for their businesses. In 2022, business owners used to be able to get a 100% bonus depreciation deduction in the year that they bought the eligible items. However, this percentage was set to drop to 80% in 23, 60% in 2024, 40% in 2025, 20% in 2026, and 0% in 2027. This new tax deal proposes changing these rules so that 100% bonus depreciation would extend through tax years 2024 and 2025. It would also provide a retroactive 100% bonus depreciation deduction for tax year 2023. These new bonus depreciation rules would apply to eligible investments in machinery, equipment, vehicles, and real estate. So if you're someone who needs to buy any of these things for your business, then these rule chains could be extremely significant for you. The second rule change is the child tax credit expansion. In addition to bonus depreciation, the new tax deal also makes several key changes to the child tax credit. For example, the bill would raise the refundable portion of the child tax credit from $1,600 to $1,900 in 2024 and $2,000 in 2025. The refundable portion is the portion that the government will issue to you as a refund if you don't owe any taxes, as opposed to just subtracting from your taxes that are due if you do owe tax. So if you have children, then you will potentially be able to get a larger child tax credit refund from the government if you don't owe any taxes at the end of the year, AKA bigger refunds. Also, the maximum child tax credit would be calculated on a per child basis instead of the credit being capped at 15% of earned income over $2,500 across the board. Additionally, the proposed bill includes a one year look back for the child tax credit. This look back would give taxpayers the ability to use their earned income from the last taxable year when calculating their maximum credit instead of the current year. So this is a huge win for families. Number three is changes to the R&D tax deduction. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 implemented a rule that business owners would be able to deduct research and development costs over a five-year period. This law presented challenges for many businesses interested in conducting R&D. The new tax deal would actually suspend the five-year timeline for deducting R&D expenses and change it so that all U.S.-based R&D expenses could be deducted immediately. So for example, if you own a company and you wanna invest $1 million into R&D, you will now be able to deduct the full 1 million for the tax year that you make the investment as long as the R&D is done in the United States. So this is a complete game changer for many companies that are looking to innovate heading into 2024. Let's go to tax change number four, expansions of the low income housing tax credit. L-I-H-T-C. The Low Income Housing Tax Credit is a tax credit that is available for both nonprofit and for-profit developers. It is designed to promote the construction and rehabilitation of affordable rental housing. Now, the new bipartisan tax deal includes a provision that would increase the ceiling for the Low Income Housing Tax Credit by 12.5%. This change would enable states to allocate more credit for affordable housing projects many different people could potentially benefit from this change. In fact, it's estimated that 16 million children from low-income families could be better off due to this change to the low-income housing tax credit. 
This new tax deal also supports the increased use of private activity bonds to help finance affordable housing. If this bill ends up getting approved and if this expansion of the low income housing tax credit goes live, then it could potentially help the housing affordability crisis in America. And this is because it estimates that the proposed change to this credit would result in the creation of 200,000 new homes for low income families. Change number five, prevention of US Taiwan double taxation. In an effort to bring portions of the highly valuable semiconductor industry back to United States shores, the new tax deal prevents double taxation for businesses and workers who operate both in the United States and in Taiwan. The prevention of double taxation for these people and entities would make it significantly easier for them to earn money in both countries. Semiconductors are a critical component for computers, smartphones, advanced machinery, televisions, and many other things. Right now, approximately 60% of the world's semiconductors are produced in Taiwan. The country also produces 90% of the world's most advanced semiconductors. So you can start to see why this would make sense for the US to create some type of law that prevents double taxation. In other words, Taiwan is a very important country. This is the main reason why the US is attempting to do away with double taxation for people and businesses that operate in both of the countries. And rule number six, tax relief for disaster victims. In our country over the past few years, there have been some unfortunately very serious disasters. For example, there were a number of awful wildfires in states like California between 2020 and 2023. Overnight, fast moving wildfires outside of LA, leaving residents fleeing for their lives. There were also horrible train derailments in East Palestine, Ohio, that took place on February 3rd, 2023. I kind of literally grabbed my wife and says, we are leaving. If you're not familiar with the East Palestine train derailment, it was an extremely unfortunate train accident that resulted in 51 train cars being derailed in the town of East Palestine, Ohio. 11 of the 51 train cars were carrying hazardous materials like vinyl chloride and benzene residue. And after the train derailed, the pile of train cars caught on fire and burned for several days. During the disaster, many people were forced to leave their homes. They suffered financial losses. Like it was a very sad event. Now, the new tax bill has a provision that would prevent any disaster relief payments from counting towards taxable income for people who were victims of the East Palestine train derailment or certain wildfires that have taken place recently. Number seven, changes to the employee retention credit. The employee retention credit or ERC is a refundable tax credit that has been available for several years for qualifying business owners who were severely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. With this tax credit, the government has been paying out $26,000 per qualifying employee that business owners continue to pay during the pandemic despite experiencing certain hardships. This tax credit helped many business owners weather the storm of the pandemic and help them recover afterwards. However, there have been unfortunately an extreme high level of fraud involving the ERC because many bad actors were running the ERC related scams. So the new bipartisan tax bill extends the statute of limitation for the IRS to pursue fraudulent or erroneous ERC claims. It also prevents new ERC claims from being filed after January 2024. So if you want to file an ERC claim and you haven't done so yet, then you could be out of time very soon. But the good news is that the fraud surrounding the ERC should calm down considerably as the ERC starts to fade out. So I'm going to get asked in the comments, Carlton, will this deal get approved? The politicians who are leading the way for this tax deal, Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Whedon, a Democrat, and House of Ways of Means Committee Chairman Jason Smith, a Republican, have said that they want the bill to be approved very quickly so that business and families can benefit from all of the tax changes that are included in this bill. There are still a few more months before taxes are due. So if this bill is passed, then many of the new provisions could have an impact on taxpayers this year for their 2023 tax returns. The bill has a higher chance of getting approved because it's a bipartisan bill. The fact that both parties collaborated to create it means that it's less likely to divide the parties. So there's a very good chance that it could get approved here pretty soon. Congress does have other things on its plate, however, such as heated debates about government spending. So it is not a guarantee that the new tax bill will get approved before the tax filing deadline, which is a part of the reason why some of my clients will be going on extension. We covered a lot of information in this video, and that is a very important piece of tax legislation that I wanted you to know. So I just will quickly go over the main points that I discussed today that I would 
like for you to walk away with. A massive $78 billion bipartisan tax deal was agreed to. This deal makes many important tax changes. However, it is not law yet because it has not been passed in Congress. The proposed bill would bring back 100% bonus depreciation. It'll expand the child tax credit. It'll allow for the immediate deduction of R&D tax credit expenses. And the new tax bill would also expand the low income housing tax credit. It'll prevent the US Taiwan double taxation and provide relief for victims of certain disasters. Finally, the new tax bill will also do away with the employee retention credit and give the government more time to investigate fraud for this tax credit. Guys, if you have any questions about the new bipartisan tax deal or any other provisions included in it, then feel free to get in touch with my team. You can also do so by clicking on the link below in today's description to book a complimentary consultation. You can find the link to my ebook, The Short-Term Rental Rule, in the description as well. This ebook teaches you how to use the short-term rental real estate tax strategy to avoid taxes on W-2 and 1099 income to save big money in taxes. I've also included a link to my free webinar in which I teach you the top tax strategies that the wealthiest 1% of Americans are using to save anywhere between 50 to sometimes 100% in taxes every single year. Feel free to check it out. Finally, I also included a link to an extremely helpful resource that can help you set up your LLC. So if you are thinking of getting an LLC, then feel free to look at this resource as well. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for joining. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new deal, whether or not you think it's gonna get approved. I care about your opinion and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.